You might be doing some things that are making your teachers not really want to help you out. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of College on Fleek. Hi, I'm Mary Dittman. I'm an award-winning business professor on the collegiate level and the creator of Wonderful Life and College on Fleek. Now, I know that you don't really care about being friends with your professors and your professors aren't trying to be friends with you either, but at some point, you're gonna need some things from your professors, okay? So the reason why you should even care about what we're gonna talk about today is what if you need help with something? Like, what if there's something in the class that you don't understand and you need help? Or what if you like need a favor? Like you're gonna ask the professor, can you take the exam at a different time? Or could you have an extension on a paper or some homework? At some point, you might want to get a reference or a recommendation from a teacher. Well, it's possible that you're doing some things that are going to make it difficult for teachers to want to do those things for you. So I'm gonna give you a little clue today, what you can do and not do that will help you out. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Are you struggling with low grades? If you're like most students, you just don't have the right tools in your toolbox. The truth is, nobody ever taught you how to study. I can relate. I'm Mary Dittman. When I was in high school and college, I had terrible test anxiety. There were many times where the only thing on my paper was my name and I had legit studied. And I was in trouble, but I came up with a study method that worked for me. And when I started teaching on the college level, I found that many of my students also struggle with test anxiety. And so I started teaching the method to them as well. The Study Smart Toolkit has literally helped hundreds of students just like you over the years. In this free training, I show you step by step how to study. You have lifetime access. You can watch it anytime you want to from your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and it works for any class, any major, any school. Now, I can't make a guarantee, but I can just tell you what I've seen with my students. The students who use the techniques in the Study Smart Toolkit go from D's and F's to A's and B's on the very next test. You want better grades with less time studying? Go to bit.ly forward slash study smart toolkit and get the College on Fleek Study Smart Toolkit for All yourself. Right. So I'm just going to go over a few things that I see my students doing and that I've heard from my colleagues and even from some students what they've done in the past that has caused them a problem. And it's not about not getting good grades because some of the students that I really like the most don't get the best grades. But let's go at it from this approach and let's talk about some things you don't wanna do. One of the biggest turnoffs for your professor is either in the classroom or when you come to the office to visit with your teacher, it's your phone and it's your earbuds or your headphones or your AirPods, whatever. Now, I just had a student last semester that she was in a science class and, and there was something going on in the class that she didn't understand. And she raised her hand, she asked the professor a question and his response was something along the lines of, well, maybe if you take your earbuds out, you would have heard what I talked about. And what she had was she had like her her earbuds in and she had one of them out. So you know what I'm talking about. Like it, it was the not, the, not the wireless AirPod, the earbud. So she got one in, the other one's dangling and her phone was put away. And what she had said to me was, well, I, you know, it was off. I mean, I wasn't even listening. But here's the deal. Many of your professors are going to be older than you are. And to someone who's not you, when I look at you and you have AirPods, earbuds, Beats, anything in your ears, how do I know if you're listening to something or not? And I'm gonna to have to assume that you probably are listening to something. 
The only way that I can know for sure that you're not is if you don't have those things in your ears. And she wanted to argue with me kind of back and forth about, well, but I mean, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't even listening to anything. Well, why do you even need to get into that kind of discussion? Don't put yourself in the position of your professor assuming that you're not paying attention. When you get into class, take the AirPods out, take the earbuds off, take the take the headphones off. In my class, I instruct my students to take those things out and take them off. Whether or not I think that they are actually listening to something, I don't need the distraction of looking at them and wondering. Plus, I wanna train them not to do that because it hurts them. Put your phone away, okay? When I see you looking at your phone, my assumption is not that it's related to my class unless on the very rare occasion when I say to the class, right now, pull out your phone, go to such and such website, tell me what you see, okay? That'll happen maybe once in a semester. So put your phone away. I had a student one time came to my office, sat down and said, I, I have a question, I need some help. I said, okay, what do you have? She asked me her question. I took a breath to answer and she immediately starts like on her phone, like texting. And I, I was like, I'll, I'll wait till you're done. She, and she doesn't even look up, she goes, no, no, go ahead, I'm listening. No, go ahead, I'm listening. Like, uh, I did not request this meeting. Okay, I have things to do. You stopped by, you want my time and my energy and my help. I'm going to give you what you are asking for and you will not even give me the courtesy of putting down your phone and looking me in the eye and then when I nicely say, oh, I can wait till you're done, you don't even look at me. I told her to get out. So don't, don't do that kind of thing. And you might say, well, what if she was taking notes on her phone? No, she wasn't. And don't, why would you put yourself in that kind of position? If you're going to go see a professor, have a pen and a piece of paper you can write on, and then you can put it in your phone later or take a picture of it with your phone and then you have it. Second thing that is going to turn your professor off to wanting to do anything to help you is gonna be skipping class, arriving late, or leaving early. If you need to leave early, you need to advise your professor and it better be a good reason. It better not be, well, I need to go to the writing center and get help with my English paper. No, I've had students sometimes come to me and say, I have a small child in school and um, you, you know, and they've been sick for a couple days and sent them to school, kind of hoping everything's okay. But I might get a call from the school that I would have to go pick them up. And if that happens, I'm going to need to slip out. And I tell them, okay, well, put your phone on silent. Keep it where you can see it. If you get that call, you know, sit towards the door. So if you get that call, you can slip out quietly. I had a student one semester who skipped my class all the time and then he wanted to come camp out in my office for 30 minutes every day and hear what we talked about. Mm -mm. I lecture in the classroom. Now, if you can't get your butt out of bed and you, you can't have any time to sit in the class, that's fine, but I don't have time for you to sit in my office. Office time is reserved to help students who attend class. Number three, anytime you're being disruptive in the class, or disrespectful. I had a student one year, and I, I, I allow my students to, to friend me and follow me and connect with me on all forms of social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything, because that's where my students are, and I'm okay with them communicating with me on those platforms. Well, I had a student one semester that I was talking about something in the class. It was related to a political situation, I was talking about it because I teach business and it was relating to if you owned a business and this situation is happening, you know, here's why you would care. So after the class, I went back to my office. You know, of course, I, I did the most important thing. Got to check Facebook. What did I miss while I was lecturing? And I'm scrolling through my own feed and this student who's in my class, based on the timestamp of his post, while he's in my class, he's posting on Facebook when your professor goes off on a tangent about politics, like anyone really cares, you know, something along those lines. And I was like, 
okay. And then another student had commented, not from my class, but like a friend of his had commented, like, I hate it when they do that. And then my student goes, yeah, I can't stand it when she does this. I wish she would just talk about the material. Like, we're friends on Facebook. You sent me a friend request. Now you're talking smack about me on Facebook in my class. And then two days later asked me, can I help him find a job? Let me think about it, no. Listen, as a professor, I need to treat all of my students fairly and equitably, meaning equally. But the hard truth is I don't like all of my students, just like you don't like all of your professors. And it, you know they may be doing a good job, but for whatever reason, you just don't like them and that's okay. You still have to treat them with respect. But normally for me, when a student is doing some of the things that I told you about just now, those start tipping me towards, I don't wanna do anything to help you. So no, when you need a, a recommendation, no. When you need me to help you out with something, no. Because why would I do that? We help people that we wanna help and put the extra effort in with. It is not part of my job description to go above and beyond and do whatever you need help with in your life. However, I do go above and beyond and I do help my students if I see that they are putting in the effort. So all I'm saying is don't shoot yourself in the foot, okay? So quit doing this stuff and I think you're gonna see that your professors are a little bit more open to doing some stuff that you want them to do. College on Fleek is a dialogue, not a monologue, and we wanna hear from you. I wanna know from you. What have you seen students doing in class or outside of class that is completely derailing them. Like you're, you're seeing it and you're like, dang, if I was a professor, I'd be ticked about that. Put that in the comments and let us know what you think. You can always connect with us at collegeonfleek.com. You can go there and get your Study Smart Toolkit. We have lots of great resources and some pretty cool College on Fleek gear for you. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time right here on College on Fleek.